All right, so we've got some broader weakness today, uh, and uh, we're obviously coming off big moves for North American uh, equity benchmarks recently. But uh, just to walk you through some of the recent numbers we've seen, coming into this session, after displaying what felt like unstoppable momentum, the Canadian benchmark had basically shed uh, about 3% in the last week. We've added to that today. The S&P 500, which was making records faster than RCA in the 1970s, had given up nearly 4% of that rally since the end of March. And then it is struggling a little bit today. And then the bond market, we've been talking about what's been happening with yields, the 10-year Treasury yield, which has risen more than 20% since the end of December. And investors, in many cases, selling bonds because of all the talk around interest rate cuts stateside being pushed up pushed out, ultimately pushing up Treasury yields. Let's get some more on some of the market dynamics now from Diana Avigdor. She's Portfolio Manager and Head of Trading at Barometer Capital Management. Diana, great to see you. Thanks for so we me. sort of all of a sudden, after this steady momentum higher, kind of hit a wall. What, what's been your take on the driving factors yeah. there? So in January, we priced in 150 uh, beeps of rate cuts. Uh, today, we're pricing in less than um, 70 in the U.S., uh, and the market through all of this rally, so yields have moved up, rate cuts have been pushed lo higher for longer and further out. Now we're talking July. And the market absorbed it really well. But now we have a little bit of a talk about no cuts. We've had a couple of Fed speakers in the last few days saying with the economic growth um, where it is, and don't get me wrong, economic growth is good. Um, it's a high-class problem to have. But uh, we're now talking about one, two cuts in the U.S. Uh, and further out the curve. Some, uh, some houses are talking December. Um, so that's kind of starting to get priced into markets a little bit, especially into the high multiple stuff. Um, earnings, you know, and we're coming ahead of earnings season, so um, they, they, better, they better hold up. You know, it's one thing to have to price in things that are changing, which the market is always doing. It's, it's, it's another if people have decided that the storyline for investing has changed substantially and it's time to, to really rethink that. Are, are we at that point yet or is this really just sort of a near-term reassessment of past <laughs> estimations? Yeah, yeah I, I, th and that's exactly the point. I think that we are not uh, changing the narrative. Um, I think that we're just holding here, checking back a little bit. Markets have been up nicely first quarter. We're only down three and a half, four percent this quarter. Um, earnings ahead, geopolitics have certainly flared up. Um, and so I think we're just uh, tentatively uh, watching what's happening. Forced selling um, has not come into the market yet. Forced selling is going to come in if we go lower. Mm. So this is an absence of buyers watching, waiting, seeing these earnings. We have lots of moving parts, and generally market dispersion increases at this time. Okay, and just to get more specific into the TSX story, and we mentioned another day of selling here after yeah. recently getting to that record high. Still for the year, your standout sectors are energy, materials, and industrials. Um, you know, the strength from those three groups has helped the benchmark at this point still hold about a 3% advance on the year. Now, I, I see energy and industrials among the groups that you like right now. Um, what are the core reasons for that? You know, energy um, is a growth story. Yes, it's a little inflationary if oil is going to run to 100. Uh, and uh, certain companies don't need oil to go to 100 uh, to actually do good. Um, CNQ, for example, is one of our holdings. Um, they're uh, a model citizen from a corporate perspective. They've increased... Uh, dividends, they have buybacks, where it took out shares about 3% in the last few years. Um, and, uh, you know, good fiscal, fiscal corporate responsibility. So um, these companies can make some money. Um, peace is not breaking out anytime soon in the world. Um, mm. It kind of plays into that as well, as well as economic growth. Um, so energy, uh, defense companies come, in, come to mind on that front as well.
And then financials, we were talking with a strategist mm -hmm. earlier who made an interesting point about Canadian financials, which have, have not seen the same performance as those sectors that you talked about, but that's the, the most influential TSX subgroup. Mm -hmm. If we are on a path towards rate cuts in this country, and, and maybe if that spurs some activity, for better or for worse, on the housing market, that maybe that actually becomes a bit of a catalyst for the sector. How, how, we, we showed a board suggesting that you're you're constructive on financials. Yeah. What are the reasons why? Yeah, so financials have a lot of moving parts, one of which, of course, is economic stability and growth. The rate cuts should be playing into it well, but it's not like they did fantastic as rates were going up because what they need is stability for the rate levels to feed into their um, systems. So you know, rates went up, did they immediately benefit from that? Not if your mortgage renewals are coming up in three years, then you can't charge people um, those higher uh, mortgage rates just on the new stuff. Um, so the, the new stuff is, is the economic um, uh, growth story. Um, their dividends are safe, they're, they're, they're also very fiscally responsible. They've set aside uh, reserves higher than expected in the, last, in the last quarter. And the narrative around that was they're being conservative. Should that not be needed because economic growth is okay and people mm -hmm. uh, are working and can pay their mortgages, those uh, reserves are gonna play back into the earnings. So their dividend is safe. You can afford to, um, to, to, to wait with them. Uh, the US banks are a different story. We particularly like JP Morgan, for example, and Citi. They're a different breed than the, this we're talking about, the Can some of the Canadian ones. But uh, J.P. Morgan, and you see Bank America today, we don't own Bank America, but they were kind of hit. J.P. Morgan was hit on the earnings, uh, but that's because their NIM expectations um, have not, NIMs were okay, but not uh, what was expected. Again, how it feeds into, uh, into the book uh, in terms of the rate uh, situation. Uh, oh, still oh. best of breed. Well, let's, okay, so you talk a little bit about J.P. Morgan there. Um, you talked about the, the reality of, you know, it's, we'd like to see peace around the world, but that is uh, unfortunately not the case. The um, uh, story of Lockheed Martin came up with, with a call we got from a viewer earlier. You, General Dynamics is a name that, that you flagged today. What is it about that business that so, catches your attention? General Dynamics, uh, it plays into this, um, this geopolitical angst that uh, we just discussed, <clears throat> but also plays into the U.S. Uh, economic growth story in terms of growth in business jets uh, that has been uh, in demand. They pay a 4% dividend that's been growing at 7% at clip. Um, so we, we, we like that uh, stock as it plays into both the macro and the micro. And real quickly before I let you go, Canadian Natural Resources just as, as an example of what you like in the energy sector. Yeah, yeah, fiscally responsible uh, company that gives back through dividends, buybacks, great balance sheet. They don't need 100 oil to, to be profitable and to do the right thing.